I don't know about all of you, but in my family, we call mac and cheese kind of one of our sweatpants meal. Sweatpants meals is a term that I stole from somewhere and I have no idea where I stole it from. So don't shout me out in the comments if you know where I got it from or somebody else used it first. I know someone else used it first, but I love it. And what I mean by sweatpants meal is this is a meal you can make in your sweatpants. I'm wearing sweatpants, right? While kids are screaming for dinner and while you just have like nothing left to give, okay? This is life. If you're like me, this happens to you a couple times a week. And yes, I'm a dietitian. Yes, I have a food blog. Sometimes I hate cooking and I don't feel it. We're going to take a meal that's that simple. I'm gonna use my food processor. So one more piece of equipment and we're gonna make this meal totally ready from start to finish in the exact same amount of time it would take to make just the plain box of mac and cheese. My name is Sharon. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist focused on gluten-free living and welcome to my channel where I help you live gluten-free without the stress. In today's video, we're going to be taking gluten-free mac and cheese, a household staple, and we are going to take it and just take it up a notch. What we're going to be doing is adding some protein and some vegetables to make this an actual balanced meal. Processed foods tend to get a lot of hate in this wellness community. I know people here, I'm a registered dietitian and lots of times people take that and they automatically assume that I only eat whole foods, I only eat things that are labeled as healthy, I only whatever. And I just need to say that cannot be like the farthest from the truth. You have to recognize I'm a mom of two, I'm a working mom, right? I'm busy which means I rely on convenience foods just like all of you. And the other thing I wanna talk about in this video beyond just normalizing the fact that it's okay to have certain foods you rely on, foods that are easy, foods that are comfortable, foods that taste good, all of that is super important. But the other thing that's important to recognize is that healthy food exists on a spectrum, okay? What is healthy for one person is not necessarily healthy for someone else. If you're watching this, chances are you are living a gluten-free lifestyle or you know and care about somebody who does. Living gluten-free in a healthy way means that you're not able to eat certain things that for other people would be healthy, right? Wheat has health benefits. But if you need to live gluten-free due to celiac disease, due to EOE, due to gluten intolerance, whatever it is, then gluten is not healthy for you, right? So to some degree, we understand that what makes a food healthy exists on a spectrum. What we're talking about in this video is not how to take a processed food and make it healthy. What we're talking about in this video is how to take a processed food like gluten-free mac and cheese and turn it into a more balanced, more complete meal. Why are we doing this? For a couple reasons. First of all, if you're like me or like my family, you, this one box of mac and cheese that says it has two and a half servings per container probably doesn't actually stretch to two and a half servings when you're relying on it to be a meal, okay? My two kids will put away this box by themselves. My husband will eat this whole box for a meal. But sometimes even after eating a whole box of this, you don't feel very satisfied. So what we're gonna do is turn up the satisfaction factor a little bit, as well as kind of just expand the amount of nutrients you're getting in this meal. We're gonna do this in a couple ways. The first way we're going to turn up the nutrition in this meal is by increasing the amount of protein. Protein helps you stay fuller for longer. Okay, it really just helps your body slow down the digestion. It makes it take longer for you to digest your food as opposed to when you have simple carbs, which I mean, this is rice pasta in both. Yes, organic white rice pasta. 
There's nothing wrong with white rice pasta, but it's a simple carbohydrate, which means you're gonna digest it pretty quickly. Um, and you will get an energy boost from it. It'll happen pretty quickly, but it won't be sustained. Protein is going to slow down that energy boost and make it last for longer. So we're gonna add protein to these. The other thing we're going to do is add vegetables to this. Vegetables obviously contain lots of vitamins. Um, the other thing that they do is they bulk out your food a little bit more, which helps you feel fuller at the time. And it does so without adding additional fat and additional calories to your meal. Um, fat is also an essential element of a meal, but these already have an okay amount of fat in them. So we're not going to be adding any outright overt fats to this. We're just gonna turn it up a little bit, make it a little bit more of a full and satisfying meal, something that will satisfy you at the time, but also give you more sustained satisfaction after completing your meal. I'm gonna do this two different ways. So I'm gonna use just the regular gluten-free rice pasta with cheddar and do one version that's dairy, and I'm gonna do a vegan version as well for all of you who, like me, are dairy-free. Watch this video, follow along, and take a peek at what I'm making. So before we really get into making this video, I have to say something. <laughs> I have been planning this exact video four weeks, okay? This means that a couple weeks ago, I did a food order and ordered mac and cheese boxes to make this video. I ordered regular gluten-free mac and cheese. I ordered a dairy-free gluten-free mac and cheese. These items were labeled gluten-free, but I didn't look that closely at the label. And this morning, when I cleaned my kitchen, I set up my camera, I got all my stuff out, I looked at the label, and it said, made on equipment with wheat. Okay, I'm gonna say two things about this. One, the product was labeled gluten-free, it was not certified gluten-free. That means it hadn't been third-party tested and verified, but the company claims to adhere to the standards set forth by the FDA. Second note, it said made on equipment with. That's a voluntary standard, okay? That's not an actual allergen standard, okay? If you wanna know more about this, and if the things I'm saying confuse you, you should check out my first masterclass that's in my Gluten-Free Wellness Collective membership. We really dig into this. But when the product is not certified gluten-free and it has one of these statements, I always try to go the next step to contact the company and figure out what are their cleaning practices? Why is this label there? Is it just a cover my butt label or is there a reason? I did not hear back from the company in time. It's usually not immediate, right? take some time to get back to you. But this morning, I legit ran to the grocery store to buy these. I, grocery store is 20 minutes from my house, ran out, ran home. At least like we are at peak fall foliage right now in upstate New York, which is beautiful. Um, but yeah, all that to say, I totally get it. I feel your pain. And guess what? We make mistakes too. So let's jump into cooking, shall we? So like I said, we're gonna add extra protein to the sauce for both the dairy and the dairy-free option, and we're gonna add vegetables. Here's how it's gonna go. We're going to make this according to package directions up until the pasta is cooking. So we're gonna boil the water, we're gonna stir in the pasta, but instead of setting the timer for the full time it says in the box, this box says seven to nine minutes, we're only setting the timer for four minutes. At four minutes, we're gonna add in whatever vegetable we're using to the water as it finishes its cooking time. While it's all cooking, we're gonna make our cheese sauce. But before I get the water boiling, I just wanna talk about what vegetables we're adding. I'm not going to say one specific vegetable is the one you should use. You should totally use whatever you like and whatever your family eats. I have three options here which are my family's favorite. Number one, peas. My kids always add peas to their mac and cheese. It is their favorite. If I make the mac and cheese, they legit are, mom, where's the peas? They love peas. So really great option. If your family is not a huge fan of vegetables, 
or or maybe have some aversion to green vegetables try cauliflower um cauliflower you can actually even like use cauliflower rice and you your family may not notice it's mixed in with noodles possibly um cauliflower i don't think has a strong taste on its own some people have a bigger version to cauliflower if you don't like it don't use it last broccoli this is my favorite to mix in with mac and cheese there's just something about cheesy broccoli and noodles that just like makes my heart happy so this is mostly what i'm going to be using today um this is what i'll be using in the dairy free because that's going to be my lunch today um i'll probably use cauliflower in the one that i'm making with dairy for my husband um because he's gonna come home from work and be hungry and he'll be eating the leftovers I packed up all of that mac and cheese with the added cauliflower and it's in the fridge ready for Tyler when he comes home. I really wish I could eat it. It was so creamy. I wanted it so bad, but dairy free problems, but I'm going to eat this. So I'm going to use Annie's vegan mac. We're going to cook it the exact same way we did the other one, but I'm going to add broccoli because that's my favorite. Um, and in the cheese sauce, I'm gonna make it the same way, except instead of using cottage cheese, I'm using cannellini beans. If you have never used this and you are dairy free, you are missing out. I am telling you, if you want to make like a soup super creamy and rich, blend some of the soup with these and it is like perfect. So I'm gonna blend the cheese packet from this with about a cup of this and adding a little bit of soy milk just to thin it out and get it to consistency. Um, if you like almond milk or something else better, use that. It'll all work.
So I finished making the Vegan Mac by Annie's and it looks so good and so creamy. So I'm gonna try it. It's perfect. It has all the taste of box mac and cheese, which some people, especially like dietitians and food bloggers would say, never settle for a box, always make homemade. But like, I don't know. I'm the kid that when I didn't like what my parents were having for dinner, I made box mac and cheese. This is my sweet spot. Like, I love the homemade stuff. It's great. If you make a great homemade gluten-free mac and cheese, extra bonus points if it's a dairy-free, like, good for you. This, this is my sweet spot and I love it. I'm thinking about making a whole YouTube series just on taking typical gluten-free convenience foods and turning them into a full meal, upping the nutrition just so you can get more um, nutrient packed recipes that are super easy and things that your family already love to eat. So if you have any ideas of some other things such as mac and cheese that you want me to transform, comment below and let me know. If you would like to see what I eat on a normal day, go ahead and check out one of my what I eat in a day videos. And if you want more cooking with me, go ahead, look in the video description and check out the Gluten-Free Wellness Collective where they get expert advice from me, a registered dietitian nutritionist who does the research for you, giving you evidence-based nutrition education. I also bring in guest experts from other areas of health and wellness to kind of give a well-rounded holistic point of view because I believe successful gluten-free living is more than cooking skills, more than food.